How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you indeed. We are thankful that you have joined us once again on this Wednesday evening for our time of study in God's word. If you would go with me in a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we stop now to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another day. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. We thank you that you are a gracious and a forgiving God and that you have forgiven us of all of our sins and trespasses against you. Lord, we pray now that as we engage the word in study, that you would enrich our hearts and empower our minds to be more committed and faithful to you. And God, help us to always be a church that is faithful to Scripture. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So we're going to go back to our study that we have commenced, and that study is entitled Characteristics of a Witnessing Church. And this evening I want to focus on a praying church from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Characteristics of a witnessing church. Let's look at the word of God. And I'm only going to read this one verse since we have read the entire chapter in the previous weeks. I want to want to look at verse number 42. <clears throat> and it says, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto our God. So as we talk about another characteristic of a witnessing church, we're talking about the characteristic of a praying church. Now, I don't have to say this to any believer, but perhaps someone may be listening or watching who's not really acquainted with prayer. Prayer is, is as simple as this. It's our opportunity to have conversation with God. It's our privilege to be able to go into the presence of the Lord and to talk to God as our Father and speak to God and allow God to speak to us. In fact, uh, prayer is an aspect or form of worship. And as we understand this characteristic of a witnessing church, we must realize that there is something powerful and important to the church who is going to be an effective witnessing church must have a high premium on prayer. So I want to talk a few moments about what this praying church looks like and what it means to be a praying church that's, that's witnessing for the Lord. A praying church, which is one of the characteristics that we're suggesting for a witnessing church. We're praying church, or you have to be a praying church, in order to remain faithful in your relationship with God. Write that down. To remain faithful. To remain faithful in your relationship with God. Secondly, to believe God in faith for witnessing opportunities. We pray to believe God in faith for witnessing opportunities. Also, thirdly, we pray to be bold in our witness for the Lord. <clears throat> we pray to be bold in our witness for the Lord. And finally, we pray that God would give guidance for effective witness, witnessing, to give guidance for effective witnessing. Now, as we, as we think of this early church and understanding that this is the very inception of this church and they're moving relatively fast in growth, and what's intriguing is that they are, they are gravitating to the teaching of the apostles. And the text says that they are continually, continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching or to the apostles' doctrine. So they are, they are paying attention to this. Then they're in this great realm of fellowship where they understand the importance of, of being together 
and being connected and serving and working together. And now they understand this importance of, of prayer. And beloved, if we are going to be the witnessing church that God would have us to be, we must make sure that we are constantly engaged in prayer. They're constantly devoting themselves to the apostles' doctrine, but you can also say that they're constantly devoting themselves to prayer. They are constantly in prayer. And we have to understand as a witnessing church how significant this is for the church, for us as believers. We are the church. If we're going to be the kind of church that characterizes, characterizes a witnessing church, we pray to remain faithful in our relationship with God. As we seek God for the sake of witnessing, as we pray to God for the sake of witnessing, we ought to pray mainly, Lord, that I need you to keep me faithful in my relationship with you. Now, if, if I want to be a great witness, I need to have authentic love for the one that I'm witnessing for. I need to have authentic love for the one that I'm witnessing about. It is because of this authentic relationship that I have with Christ. It is because of the depth of my love for for God, that I want to be a witness. Now, the more you pray about God continuing to nurture your relationship with him, God continuing to build your relationship with him, the more you know God, the more you love God, the more you're in relationship with God, the deeper that relationship goes, the more you want to tell others about the God who you are in relationship with. You want, you want to keep that relationship so strong that as God continues to strengthen your life, as God continues to lead your life, you want to be able to tell others, I, I can't help but be a witness because of how God loves me, because of how God keeps me, because of how God directs my life, because of how God cares for me. And it is through that authentic relationship, that loving, nurturing relationship that you have with the Father, that loving, nurturing relationship that you have with the Son, that you're empowered by the Holy Spirit to go out and witness. So when we think of this, we have to understand that if we have this heart for God, this love for God in relationship, it gives us such a desire to go out into the world and witness because of the depth of our love for him. Now, what happens is if we fail to pray and ask God to strengthen that relationship, making our relationship with him more fruitful, making our relationship with him deeper, what happens is we will discover that our witnessing is not based upon an authentic, deep love for Christ, but it's based upon me just going through the ritual motions of witnessing. I'm just doing this because it seems like the thing to do. I'm doing this because... I want to look like I'm holy. I want to look like I'm religious. I want to look like I'm extremely righteous. It, I, 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 want, I want it to look as if I'm, I'm doing my part. That's what happens when this, is, this witnessing is done apart from a relationship in God. If my relationship is right in God, I have a desire and a determination to want to witness. But, but when my relationship is not where it needs to be in God, I might or I might not witness. And if I do witness, maybe it's because I was invited to go out. So just because I'm in a ministry or it's my turn, I'll go ahead and go so that they can just count me present. But I have no passion. We have to move from just wanting to be present to having passion 
that will produce productivity. We have to say, Lord, I love you so much that even if they don't go, I'm going to still tell the world about you. Lord, even if I'm not with the group out witnessing, every chance that I get when I reach somebody, when I see somebody, I'm going to tell them about you. But that's why you pray for God to continue to build and strengthen the relationship you have, the love you have for him that you will still want to worship him. Now, let me tell you how significant this is. Praying for God to strengthen that relationship, it works one way when everything is well in your life. But what happens when you deal with suffering, when you deal with pain, when you deal with agony, when you find yourself in the valley, can you still pray for God to authenticate that relationship, for God to deepen that relationship. Because when you're praying for a deeper relationship with God, a closer relationship with God, it does not grow deeper. It does not simply become better by you always being on the mountain. Many times, the depth of your relationship with God will be built in the valley. It will be built in the midst of of the crucible of suffering and pain. Sometimes you will have to go through the fire and that will fortify your love with God all the more. But secondly, not only must, as the praying church, we must pray to remain faithful in our relationship, but we must pray to believe in God for witnessing opportunities. In our faith, we must believe God to give us the opportunity to win lost souls. We, 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 must, we must pray, Lord, give me the opportunity to speak to somebody that may not know the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. And let me tell you, beloved, this is not a prayer you should perhaps just pray on a Sunday. This is not a prayer you should just pray maybe on a Wednesday. I'm going to church or going to Bible study or no, no, this, this should be a part of your daily devotion. When you wake up in the morning, Lord, allow me to cross paths with someone who does not know you that I can share my faith with them. Lord, allow me to give, give me the space. Give me the opportunity with one of my coworkers so that I can share my faith in you with him. Lord, Lord, put us in the break room at the same time. Lord, put us, put us at the same restaurant at lunch. Lord, place me next to somebody and, and set the scene and the stage for me to, to be able to tell them about you. Now, if that is what you're asking God for, you're asking God to give you an opportunity to share your faith. You're, 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 not, you're not leaving it to chance. You're, you're not leaving it to accident. You're saying, Lord, I'm asking for you to create an opportunity for me to witness to someone, share my faith, and lead them to a relationship with you. Can you imagine? L listen, listen, beloved, listen. Can you imagine if each one of us, each one of us as believers, every single day, Asked God for, listen, an opportunity, an opportunity, not opportunities, but an opportunity to win somebody. And let's say God granted us that opportunity and gave us a positive result. Can you imagine how we could literally turn the world upside down? If we would ask God, Lord, give me an opportunity today. Now you do that seven days a week. Do that 365 days a year. Let's just say every time you ask God, let's just say God was so gracious, he gave you the opportunity and during that opportunity he gave you the win. That you were able to win them to Jesus. Can you imagine what this world would look like if we were that passionate in our prayer making that petition to God, that beloved, do you see where I'm going? The, the church that's a witnessing church has to be a praying church because they're praying to God for opportunity. But then next, you have to pray, watch this, to be bold in your witness for the Lord. 
Now, that doesn't seem like much. But, beloved, let me tell you, being bold in your witness is something you must pray about. Do you remember the story of Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 19? Elijah faces Jezebel. Remember this now, Elijah was, was at the brook. God fed him by the ravens. The ravens would bring him bread. He was at the brook, he had water. The Lord stopped the ravens from bringing him bread. The Lord dried up the brook, sent him to Zarephath, but told him, when you get to Zarephath, there'll be a widow there to sustain you. you Gets to Zarephath, there's a widow, doesn't have but a little oil in the cruise, a little meal in a barrel. He tells her to make him a cake. She makes him a cake, and God provides for the widow. Every time she goes to the meal barrel, there's meal. Every time she goes to the oil cruise, there's oil. Elijah is sustained. Goes on in the narrative. <clears throat> what happens then is the widow's son dies. The widow is concerned, what have you done? God gives him the ability to bring the boy back to life. Another victory. Now, he goes to Mount Carmel. 450 prophets of Baal. Y'all call on your God, I'll call on mine. 450 prophets. Baal, Baal, Baal never shows up. He sets, he builds an altar, pours water on the altar. God rains fire down from heaven on the mountain of Carmel. God gives him another victory. Then he goes beyond the mountain to the valley. Jezebel sends a message and says, I'm going to do to you what happened to those prophets. I'm going to kill you. He took off the running, ran off and asked the Lord, let me die. Lord, I, let me die. Go sleep under a tree. The Lord sends an angel, encourages him. Ultimately, he is pressed to move forward. My point to that is, as many victories as God may give you, there will be seasons of difficulty, despair, depression, and times of being down. What will you do in the moments where you seemingly forget the victories that God has given you? Because when God is blessing the witnessing church, there will be times when the enemy will come and try to make you feel that you're inadequate and that you should not be doing what you're doing. That's when you have to say, Lord, I need to be bold. When you face the world and the world rejects you, when you face people and you're witnessing to them about the Lord and they curse you out, how will you handle those moments? You have to be bold. And I believe this first century church, they had to constantly seek God because guess what? If you keep reading in the book of Acts, what you will discover is eventually trouble is coming. And beloved, what you have to know is, though you may be good now, if you are faithful to your witness unto God, faithful to God in relationship, God starts opening doors of opportunity for you to witness. Do you not know the enemy is going to get on your trail and try to take you out because he does not want you doing what you're doing because every time you witness, every time you win somebody to Christ, you become a threat to the devil's throne. And that's why you have to pray, God, give me boldness. Give me, don't, don't let me be afraid when, when, when I'm rejected. Don't, don't let me, don't let me be afraid when, when they mishandle me, when I simply go up to strike up a conversation and they tell me they don't want to hear about that God stuff. They don't want to hear about that Jesus stuff because if he was real, I wouldn't be going through this. If God was this, I wouldn't have to deal with this. But you have to still say, Lord, make me bold. Finally, we have to pray that God will give us guidance for effective witnessing. See, if you're going to be the witnessing church, if we're going to be the witnessing church, we have to ask God to give us 
guidance. Now, why is this important for the witnessing church? Because if we are not careful, we will try to choose our place rather than let God choose for us the place. We will try to choose the people rather than allowing God to choose the people. Remember, go back up and I was saying, Lord, create opportunities. See, you have to think of it like this. Sometime we, will, we would rather pick the place because we're comfortable. Pick the people because we feel like we know them. But see, when you say, God, give me guidance, you have to know what you're praying for now. You have to know, you have to know what you're asking God for because my prayer may be here. Lord, give me the right place. Now watch this. But I'll choose this place because this is a comfortable place. This is not outside of my comfort zone. This is a convenient place. This, this, is, this is where I'm familiar. I, Lord, Lord, I, I want to witness. I want to witness as long as I'm in this comfortable, familiar space, this place where people I know. But God says, that's not where I want you. God puts you in a place of unfamiliarity. God puts you in a place with people who are not so, not so nice. God puts you in a place where your, your life may be in danger. Your, your safety may be in trouble because, because you said over here, Lord, I, I live for you. Lord, I'll die for you. Lord, Lord, wherever you want me to go, send me, Lord, I'll go. God says, okay, I'm sending you over here. And over here, they don't like people like you. Over here, they, they don't want to hear from people like you. But will you, will you still be bold enough in your witness? Will, will you still stand strong enough because of your relationship with God? Will you still then be saying, Lord, give me an opportunity. Lord, give me people. And then when they show up, will you be bold enough to tell them about Jesus? Or will you be afraid because you don't know how they're going to respond? In fact, you don't know if they're going to do something to bring body harm you. you don't know if they're going to try to hurt you matter of fact they may even try to kill you but you said over here Lord whatever you want me to do wherever you want me to go I live for you I'll die for you in this space where it's comfortable and convenient the space where we know we're familiar it's easy but but when do you ask God from here wherever and God sends you here the real question is, is your relationship strong enough with God that you say, Lord, even in this place of unfamiliarity, even in this uncharted territory, I know that if you position me here, you will protect me. God, if you place me here, you will make me productive. And God, whatever happens in this space, as long as you get the glory, that's all that matters. So, Lord, if, if I have to lose my life standing where you place me, I'll lose it. God, if, if I have to be taken out standing where you place me, or whatever, Lord, I just want to be where you want me to be. And I promise you, if you allow God to guide you to where he wants you to be, and you stay faithful to God, you, you keep your faith in God. You keep your fellowship with God. You, you, you can keep your relationship solid with God. God will take care of you. And beloved, I say this as I get ready to conclude. I want us to know that as the witnessing church, the church that stands for God, the church that's in relationship with God, the church that's bold for God, the, the church that is guided by God as a witness, you simply should say, Lord, we're praying so that we can be better. We're praying, God, so that we can be effective. Lord, don't just, don't, don't just let us go through the motions to say, well, we went out today, never with any expectation of winning anybody. Lord, we witnessed today just going through the motions, but, but Lord, we want, we want you to touch somebody's heart. 
Lord, prepare the territory before we go. Lord, send us to the right place so that we can be effective. God, give us a greater love and passion for you that we can't help but tell others about you because we know the power of being in relationship with you and you being both Lord and Savior of our life. Beloved, I close by telling you, if we're going to be the witnessing church that God would have us to be, we can never underestimate the power and the priority of prayer. It must be essential to the life of the church that's going to make the impact for the glory of God to win the lost souls that he has waiting for us to share his message with. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you, God, for the power of prayer. Lord, help us to never underestimate the power, the significance, prayer, how it strengthens us for the journey, how prayer God puts us in the right frame of mind and place that we can be most effective in witnessing, how it constantly builds our relationship with you. Lord, I pray now that you would help the church, the church universal, to be the witnessing church that values prayer and prays on a consistent basis to be effective for you. We thank you, God, for who you are. It's in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we offer this prayer. Every child of God said amen. God bless you, beloved. We thank you again for joining us and being here with us in Bible study. I pray that you are keeping up with these characteristics so that you can study them even more beyond the Bible study and so that you can apply them to your life each and every day to make you a more effective witness for the glory of God. Again, I want you to join us in worship, virtual worship on Sunday. We look forward to seeing you. Also, just know that if you would like to be a part of the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, if you're not saved, God is willing to save you. If you have walked away, God is a God of another chance. And if you are a person looking to be a part of what God is doing here, wherever you may be, geographically, God can connect you and we will teach you how to study the scriptures, how to apply the scriptures to your life each and every day, how to live them. If you would like to be a part, it's on your screen as to how you can connect. And if you are listening via teleconference, momentarily someone will come onto the call and tell you how you can connect. If you'd like to share, God has blessed your life. You want to be a blessing to the ministry and the work here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church so that we can continue to do the work of kingdom building. You may, at this time, share what God has placed upon your heart. On the screen, it gives you the multiple ways that you can share. And if you are listening via teleconference, momentarily someone will come on and tell you how you can share your gifts with the Lord's church. We thank you so much for being with us once again. We love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I pray that God will bless you and I pray that God will keep you in perfect peace. God bless.